Hello, my name is Scott Grizzard. This is from the University of South Florida. This is just in time five, a review of the algebra of exponents, a little bit of a review of the stuff that you learned from in pre-calc, and just a couple new new tricks that you may uh, you may not have seen before. So our motivation, um, and if you watch lecture five A, you will see this. Our motivation is to compute things like the derivative of nine x to the fifth over the cube root of x. So just to review how we did this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the power rule. So the power rule was that d over dx of x to the c equals uh, cx to the c minus 1. So I can use the power rule on this by converting everything to exponential form. So what we're doing today is not really the calculus of it, but the algebra that we did that we got this for so here i'm going to have 9x to the fifth this is going to be the derivative with respect to x of 9x to the fifth times now i'm going to go after the thing on the bottom so let's do divided by now the cube root of x is really x to the one third so this is going to be 9x to the fifth over x to the one over three now, because it's on the bottom, I can move it to the top using a negative sign, and I get the derivative with respect to x of 9x to the fifth times x to the negative 1 over 3. And again, all of this is algebra. I haven't done anything with the calculus yet. I haven't moved any of the derivatives. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine these by, remember, I'm multiplying these two, um, these two together. That means that I can add the exponent. So I'm going to have 9, I'm sorry, the derivative with respect to x of 9 x to the 5 minus 1 over 3. And now 5 I did is, is 15 over 3, so I'm going to get the derivative with respect to x of 9 times x to the, this, this 5 is going to become 15, so it's going to be 14 over 3. And now I can take the derivative. So this is a nice, this is in, you know, this is a, a constant here in the upper, in the, in the exponent, so I just use the power rule. So I'm going to get 9, which I pull out there, times 14 over 3, x to the 14 over 3 minus 1. And then I just simplify as I desire. I'm not going to simplify all of this, but I will just make this 3 times 14, uh, x to the, now I'm going to subtract the, four, the 3 from the 14, and I'm going to wind up with 11 over 3. And that's my answer. I just need to multiply out the 3 and the 14. And if I do that, it's 42x to the 11 over 3. And then I can convert it back if I so desire. So that's the motivation behind what we're doing. Okay, so let's talk about how mathematician these numbers. Let's try the number 16. Now, you may think of the 16 as something that's, you know, slightly bigger than 5. Um, or you might think of 16 as, uh, I'm sorry, slightly bigger than 15. Or you may think of 16 as something like 8 times 2 or 17 minus 1. But when a mathematician sees 16, what a mathematician sees is the prime factorization. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, times 2. He sees four twos, okay? So let's say that I want the square root of 16. Well, what I want the square root of 16, what I really want is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, but I want half the two-ness, okay? So half the two-ness is 2 times 2, which equals 4, all right? And that's how a mathematician thinks of the square root of 16. It's half the two-ness of 16. Likewise, let's say I want to compute 16, the square root of 16 cubed. 
Now, I could compute 16 cubed and then find its square root, but let's look at it this way. I want 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. I want 3 times the 2-ness, and then I want half of that. So what I'm instead going to do is do 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, right? I want 3 times the 2-ness and then half of that. Well, that's the same as half of the 2-ness three times, or three halves of the two-ness, okay? So half the two-ness would be this, two times two, and then I want three of three of those, so what I want is six twos. Two times two times two times two times two times two, which is 64. So that's how I can think of it. Instead of computing 16 cubed and then taking the square root, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have three halves of the two-ness, okay? Let's look at another one. Let's say I want the cube root of eight squared, okay? Well, that eight is eight times eight times eight. And then I'm going to square it, and then I'm going to take the cube root. So what I want is two-thirds I'm sorry, not 8 times 8 times 8 times 8. 2 times 2 times 2. And now what I want is 2 thirds of the 2-ness. Well, 2 thirds of the 2-ness is 2 of these. 2 times 2, which equals 4. Okay? So that's how a mathematician thinks of numbers, and that's why we have this fractional exponent notation. Okay, so remember from pre-calc that there are these rules to multiplication and division with exponents. So when multiplying, I add the exponents. So for example, x to the fourth times the cube root of x would be x to the fourth times x to the one third. And then I just, that I combine the exponents and that's x to the fourth plus one third, which is x to the 13 over three. Likewise, when I divide, I subtract the exponents. Um, so here I've got, x, I wind up with x to the fourth minus the uh, two-thirds, which was x to the 10 over three. Now, it's helpful that instead of trying to subtract the exponents, you sometimes just want to multiply negative exponents instead, and that's perfectly fine. I convert this lower thing to a negative exponent. So if I'm subtracting, if, if when dividing, I get, um, if dividing, I subtract the exponent below, that means that something like this, x, 1 over x would equal, I'm going to divide by the net, by the exponent of the bottom. Here I've got a 0, right? This is x to the 0, which is 1. So this becomes simply x to the 0 minus uh, 1, which would become x to the negative 1. So anything that's on the bottom is going to be a negative exponent. So here I multiply the negative exponents. I get x to the 4th over the cube root of x squared would become x to the fourth times x to the negative two over three. So I convert the bottom here to a positive exponent first, as I did up here. And then I just move the thing up, and then I'm multiplying instead of dividing. And then I get the x to the ten-third again. Okay. So that gives us two tricks here. Exponents on the bottom will become negative exponents. Okay. And then I can multiply, uh, I can multiply these exponents um, to combine them all into one. So instead of having to use the product rule, I can simply use the power rule on them. I can also take powers of power. So the rule is here, if I take powers, multiply. So at a basic level, it would be x to the a to the b equals x to the a times b. Okay, so for example, x to the fourth cubed would be x to the twelfth. x, 1 over x squared cubed would be x to the negative 2 
cubed, which would be x to the negative 6. And then this more complicated one, the cube root of x to the 5th squared would equal x to the 10 over 3, because I just multiply all the exponents. So if I'm taking powers of powers, I simply multiply the exponents. Now, in the last lecture, in lecture 4a, I made a huge deal. If you haven't watched it yet, you'll see this later. I made a huge deal about what happens when the exponent moves versus what happens when the base moves. So, for example, when I have, when I take the derivative of 2 to the x, I don't use the power rule, I use the exponent rule. But all of these tricks that we've just done are algebra. They are not calculus. And algebra doesn't care what moves. The calculus is going to care, but the algebra does not. So 1 over e to the x is simply e to the negative x. And I don't have to worry about this distinction yet about the power rule versus the exponential rule. Okay? Remember that the power rule, I can't use the power rule on e to the negative x because the power rule only lets the, wants the base to move while the exponent stays fixed or the power stays fixed. But I can still apply the algebra tricks because the algebra tricks don't care. So things like 2 to the x over 2 become 2 to the x minus 1. Again, the, the, the calculus will care, but the algebra doesn't. So when I've got the derivative of 2 to the x, we'll call that's the log of 2 times um, 2 to the x. That, two, that x should be up there that 2 to the x. I care about what moves. That's the exponent rule. But again, I've got algebra here. So if I want to convert 2 to the x minus 1, the derivative with respect to x, that equals the derivative with respect to x of 2 to the x over 2. Again, the algebra doesn't care. Okay? Algebra doesn't care about the calculus. It doesn't care what moves and what doesn't. So I can a lot of times do algebraic manipulations, and we'll see this later on when we do uh, logarithmic differentiation. I can often do algebraic manipulations to things I can't get a handle on with the calculus yet. So I can use algebra to get a handle on things that are uh, the calculus. Okay. Another hugely powerful thing to do with expo these exponent rules are the trig tricks, okay? So in Calc 2, you can prove this, that e to the i theta equals cosine of theta plus i sine theta. And believe it or not, I can actually convert questions about trig into questions about exponents using this formula, okay? This is one of the old Euler's, Euler's tricks. So... And the way to remember this formula is that sine has an i in it. Just like sine is north because sine has an n in it, the same thing. Sine has an i in it, so the sine is the thing that gets the imaginary number. Okay. And again, you can prove this using Taylor series, and you'll get that trick in Calc 2. But suppose I want to remember what the formulas were for sine 2 alpha and cosine of 2 alpha. Well, I can actually convert this to a question about exponents. So. Let's look at this. e to the i 2 alpha, right? Because 2 alpha is my theta. Equals, well, cosine of 2 alpha plus i sine of 2 alpha. That's from my formula. However, let's look at this. Remember, I can break this up because this is i2, I can actually make this e i alpha squared. And that's going to do something very interesting for me. e i alpha squared. Well, now this is going to equal cosine of alpha plus i sine of alpha squared. Okay, well, now I'm just going to FOIL this, and I'm going to get cosine squared alpha plus 2i cosine alpha sine alpha, right? Those are the middle terms, plus i squared sine squared alpha. Now, i squared is negative 1. 
So this right here is really cosine squared alpha plus 2i cosine alpha sine alpha minus sine squared alpha. So this term right here is all real. This term right here is all real. And this term right here is all imaginary. So I just line them up. So these are the real terms. Oops. Right, they're the real terms, which will correspond there. And then these are the imaginary terms. So that gives me the following information. That tells me that cosine of two alpha equals cosine squared alpha minus sine squared alpha. And it tells me that the that sine of two alpha equals this thing without the i in it, because I divided out the i, two cosine alpha sine alpha. Now wasn't that easier than remembering the formula? You know, you just you get both formulas there by simply putting in alpha. You can do the same for alpha plus beta, and that'll be a little piece of exercise for you. So exercise. Okay, and spell that right. Okay, so here's a little problem for you. Derive the formula for uh, sine of alpha plus beta and cosine of alpha plus beta. Okay, so here's part of it, right? I'm going to do it just like I did here in two ways. I'm going to have e to the i alpha plus beta. And that's going to equal two things. I'm going to have a, here I'm going to have a cosine of alpha plus beta plus i sine alpha plus beta. And then I'm going to break this up here. I'm going to get E alpha plus I beta. So that's going to become E I beta. And then the rest of the formulas for you to figure out. Okay. So we've done a couple things here. We went over the rules for fractional exponents, multiplying terms, dividing them. We looked at negative exponents. We also looked at the rules of uh, powers of powers. Um, we talked about the fact that it's all algebra, and then we went over some cool exponent tricks that you could do to remember all these formulas. You don't actually have to remember the formulas, but because of this nice little, um, Euler's nice little formula here, e to the i theta equals cosine of theta plus i sine of theta, because of that formula, again, you'll get to prove it in Calc 2, um, we can actually break up all, we can translate all these hard to remember trig formulas in the formulas about exponents, which are easy to remember. Okay, thank you very much.